we have right now one of the most exciting times in terms of communication that our world has ever seen. We have incredible technology, we have incredible instruments, an ability to address and to inform and to learn through technology. We have our smartphones, our tablets, we have our laptops, we have our computers, we have cameras that share all of this around the world within seconds. This ability to communicate is extraordinary. But there's a Faustian bargain at play here because all of these instruments that allow you to do what you do, all of these instruments that allow me to create and continue my work come with a price. And that price is being paid by the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. In eastern regions of the Democratic Republic of Congo, there's a conflict going on to access the natural resources that we use every day, that we use in our smartphones, that we use in our tablets, that we use in our cameras, that we use in our cars. And this is a significant problem that we need to solve together. There are young boys like this one, 15 years old. When I took this photograph last May, he was guarding an illegal gold mine in a town called Bavi for a warlord called Cobra Matata. Cobra Matata had about 60 child soldiers guarding him and the mines around him. And the whole population of Bavi lived in fear of this occupation of this warlord. He wasn't the only one. This young boy is 11. He fights for a, a group called the Mai Mai. Mai in Swahili is water. And the Mai Mai believe that bullets will drop off them like water when they go to battle. This young girl is fighting for the same group. She was abducted in 2008 by the group and was forced to fight to access the mines that contained tin, which we use as solder in our electronic products. Tungsten, it makes our phones vibrate. And tantalum, which we use to make our batteries store energy. All of these products we find in DRC. And there are people like this girl that are guarding and fighting to get access to those mines so that we can use the electronic products that we use every day. When the fighting stops, the young children that had been forced to fight to gain access to the mines are then forced to work inside the mines, extracting the natural resources that will then be put together and illegally exported out of the country. And this young boy, he's 14 years old, working in a gold mine in Pluto in northeastern Congo. The gold from this mine will be smuggled to Uganda and it will end up on the international exchanges being traded on the international exchanges and being bought by us. They're forced to work in these mines 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They live there, they eat there, they sleep there. There is nowhere for them to go. Many of them have lost their parents through the conflict. Many of them have lost their families through displacement. And their only family, really, are these other soldiers that surround them and other, the other miners that are working in these mines. Unfortunately, these mines are treacherous. There are many tunnels that collapse. There are many landslides due to heavy rains. And these landslides kill hundreds every year. And the conditions that these people are working in so that we can use the natural resources from these areas are devastating. In this particular mine, there's horrendous cholera outbreak, typhoid in the, in the village next door. Many of the people here are dying also of malaria. So how does it happen? How does it get from there, from that mine where we saw that 14-year-old, to us? It leaves eastern Congo and gets smuggled across the border to Uganda and Rwanda and Burundi. It's then shipped to the east coast of Africa and gets put on transport vessels. Those transport vessels then take it to smelting companies in mostly Asia. There, these natural resources are then processed. They're processed into the raw materials that we use in our electronic products. They then end up in computers, they end up in tablets, and they get shipped to us, and we buy them. The impact of this devastating conflict that has killed over 5.5 million people in 10 years is the huge displacement of population. Two million people are currently displaced in eastern Congo. When the fighting comes to the towns that they live in, the towns that are surrounded by the mines, the fighting continues and the people flee. They flee with whatever they can carry on their heads, they flee with whatever they can give their children to carry, and the whole family disappears, sometimes walking many hundreds of kilometers to safety. When they get to safety, they try to find accommodation, 
and build homes to shelter their family from the harsh sun and from the horrific rains. Thousands and thousands of people come to these camps and as they grow, the conditions, the sanitary conditions, the health conditions deteriorate massively. And around rainy season, when the rains create a mixture between the feces that are created in a place like this and the drinking water, cholera becomes uncontrollable and hundreds, not thousands, are dying in each of these camps. The young mothers often have to flee on their own. They have to flee with their children because their husbands have either been killed in the conflict by the military or they are actually military themselves and are fighting in the conflict. And so they take the responsibility for the families and they take the responsibility for caring for their families, which means that they have to find firewood to cook, they have to find water to drink and cook with, and it's at this time that they become the most vulnerable and the most deadly weapon in this war is used, which is sexual violence. 40,000 women are raped every year in Eastern Congo. A survey has just been completed where it concluded that 40% of all women in Eastern Congo will experience sexual violence at some point in their life. This image I took in a sexual violence clinic in Goma in Eastern Congo last January. And you'll see on the top right-hand side some statistics. They total up to 540 admissions so far into this program on this year. I took this picture on the 28th of January, 2013. Those 540 admissions had been coming into this one centre in one town in Eastern Congo. And there are hundreds of centres in every town in Eastern Congo, so you can see the impact that it has on the young mothers. This young girl in the picture is 13 years old. She was raped by my, my soldiers. She became pregnant, luckily managed to escape, and is now living in this centre with her young child. I mentioned this figure of 5.5 million people that have died as a result of this conflict. Not many of them have died from the bullet or the gun. In fact, a very small percentage, maybe about 5% of that number, have died from direct violence. The majority have died because of lack of access to medication. Lack of access to medication because of the overall insecurity in the region. That health care simply cannot be delivered to the point of need because there is too much insecurity going on in some of the towns and, and hospitals like this one back in Bavi have hundreds of people sitting there waiting for medication and waiting for help. When I arrived here, they didn't even have a paracetamol. That leads to horrific statistics. 116 young children out of every thousand born in eastern Congo die in childbirth. To put that in context, in the country I live in, in Norway, it's four. 196 children out of every thousand will not make it to the age of five in eastern Congo. These statistics are horrific, but those are statistics. This is the reality. This is um, a funeral of a young six-month-old girl, Alexandrine, who died of cholera in a camp in Goma. And the worst time I've had was when I had to go to 19 of these funerals of young girls. It's devastating, but there is a solution. In 2010, in America, the Frank Dodd Bill was passed into law. That meant every American manufacturer of electronic products had to declare what sources they were using for their natural resources, where their natural resources were coming from. For every publicly listed company on the US Stock Exchange, these organizations had to announce where they were going to source their natural resources from, which led to a huge movement to push against this law, not to change the way they sourced minerals, but to push against the law and they tried to get the law scrapped. Thankfully, there were one or two organizations that took their responsibility. Intel have recently announced that all of their processors will now be conflict mineral free. Apple have just announced that they will now be producing all of their products with conflict mineral free tin, the solder. But a processor is only a small part of an electronic product. And tin is only one natural resource that we use in our electronic products. So we have a long way to go. And the industry is not moving as quick as it should do. And so this conflict is continuing. And these mines are still being exploited. Of 200 smelting companies around the world that produce all the natural resources that we ever use in, in electronic products, only 45 of them are considered conflict-free. And so, seeing as the industry isn't moving quick enough, 
We have to push them as consumers. We have to make these people hear your voices every time you buy an iPhone, or every time you buy a tablet, every time you buy a smartphone, every time you buy a new camera. You work out whether these companies are doing the right thing. And you can go to, there's a website called raisehopeforcongo.org, and you can see the list of the electronics companies that you all use and buy products from, and you can see how well they are engaging in trying to change natural resource sourcing for their products. No one is saying, don't buy these products. I am probably the worst user of natural resources from conflict zones in this room. But what I'm trying to say is be aware and push for change. Make sure that you engage with these manufacturers, engage with these electronics companies. And you can also do that on this website, raisehopeforcongo.org. And you can email Hitachi. You can email Apple. You can email Intel. You can email Nikon and tell them that you are upset about the rate of change. I would like, as a consumer, to use only conflict mineral-free products. But right now, there is no conflict mineral-free product in mass production. And that should change.